Good evening, y'all. Um, that's a little something I want to share with you all today. And it's probably going to ruffle some feathers, and that's fine. Um, I had a confrontation today with a, um, a young lady. She had a, a four-year-old little girl. A little girl couldn't have been but maybe, maybe three, four years old and you know they were in a crowded store everybody's trying to get uniforms and trying to get supplies and everything for their kids and it's crowded it's a lot going on and we got to realize that children experience anxiety and they get hungry and they get tired and they get overwhelmed especially when it's a lot going on it's a lot of people a lot of different energy it's a lot of noise children get irritable when um babies you know and children get irritable when it's a whole lot going on and this girl i walked in the baby was the good girl was screaming and crying I didn't say anything, you know. I, I, I'm not going to say it wasn't my business, but that's I, I'm going to save that for later on. I didn't say anything because I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what had, what happened, you know. The, the little girl could have not, you know, been listening. So, as I continued into the store, I'm trying to get things together for my children. Um... And I noticed just every now and again, all you hear is pow, pow, just popping on, on the child. And she, and the more the more she popped it, the more she she screamed. And common sense would be like, okay, that's not working. Won't you try to stop and just pause? It's not the end of the world, and see what's going on with the child. But you know, there there's a patience has to be taught. So, um. Eventually, because I mean, it, it just it's something about not treating children and elderly right, it does something to me, you know. So I take a deep breath and I'm like, poor baby, you know, to myself. So she ends up behind us while we were uh, waiting in line for shirts, uniform shirts. She ends up behind us, and the little girl said, Mommy, and she looked down and popped the little girl. Shut, shut the F up. Little girl went to screaming again. Okay, they right behind me at this point. So I looked back. I didn't look at her in no mean way. I just looked at her, hoping that she would kind of come to herself and check herself, but she bucks her eyes and do like this at me. And I said, you know, maybe she's tired and, and hungry. I said, hell. I'm, I'm, I'm tired. This is exhausting or whatever. I don't give a F. You know, this my MF and child. And, you know, I say, well, you know, won't you try and see what's going on with your child then? You know, I say, care about your child. Love on your child. Find out what's going on. I say, what's popping on? I ain't doing it. You know, I ain't, ain't fixing it. And I, well, this my child. I say, and this my mouth. If you could, that's your challenge, you could do what you want to do, then it's my mouth and I could say what I want to say. So, um, you know me, you know, everybody don't have the same beliefs that I have. And I realized that in the world, but she kept on talking about, this my in there for child. And I just looked at her, I said, that's God's child. I said, that child is your assignment, but that's God's child. So, um she proceeds to tell me that I was going to need God because she was going to snatch me and this and that and I say you ain't going to hit on me like you hit on that little girl. I said you continue to bully your child. I said you're not going to bully me you know. So she proceeds to I snatch that wig off your head. I said I got hair under here but what you going to do after you snatch it though? I said are you going to be able to prevent what's going to happen to you once you snatch it? I said because I got hair under here so, um, you know, she's like, hey, you know, B and MF and all that. So one lady turned around and was like, ladies, ladies, ladies. And I looked at her and said, it's only one lady in this, it's only one lady in this conversation. Oh, B, I want to beat your MF and A so bad. I said, you ain't got to want to. Try it. I said, I ain't trying to, you know, I ain't trying to fight with you, ma'am. I'm just trying to say, just take a minute and just see what's going on with her. Because popping on her ain't working. I said... You know, and she's screaming and hollering and hollering, and everybody in here 
trying to get stuff done. I don't, I don't care. You can stop talking to me. I said, no, I don't have to stop talking. I said, you can stop listening and you can stop responding, but I don't have to stop talking. So I went ahead and turned around because, you know, I was a little caught up in the moment. But once I realized I was talking to somebody who just didn't care, you know, they, you know, she went ahead and she just kept on talking and kept on trying to get me to respond. And I'm like, if she wanted to do something, she'd do it. Don't, don't try to, don't try to provoke me or try to antagonize me, you know, do what you feel you need to do. So, um, I got my shirts or whatever, went over, got another line of older lady, older black lady had heard it all. And she said, baby, you wasn't wrong. You just can't tell these young folks nothing these days. So I, I just don't say nothing. And I say, you know what? That's the problem. I said, I understand your position. You know, I said, because you're a lot older. You can't get out here, you know, and risk getting yourself hurt. I said, but I'm in that, I'm in that happy medium. I'm in that happy medium. I still got a little, I still got a little energy left. You know what I mean? And uh, she's like, but you, you was right. And I said, you know, I said, I was really just sticking up for that, that, that child. You know, and that the child looked at me and she looked at me and I smiled at her. She didn't cry anymore. We were still in that store for a while. That little girl, once I smiled at that little girl, that little girl didn't cry anymore. She probably just wanted to be acknowledged. She probably just wanted a little bit of attention. But what, I, what I'm getting to with all of that is this. We keep talking about, and this is specifically for the, the black community, um, no shade toward any other, you know, community of people because every, there's no perfect people. So there's no perfect parents. Um, but, 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 but culturally we have to understand, we wonder why our children get out here and kill each other, why they murder each other, why they, why people grow up us as a people as black people and treat each other so bad and you have as black people you have heard time and time again even in church people we don't know how to treat each other why can't we get along why can't other races of people get along uh, why can't other other races of people can can pull together and do this and do that and start businesses and, and do things and it's just so hard for black folks to get along with each other and i believe it starts on how we treat our children at home I believe it starts on how, from, from how we conceive our children, whether our children are conceived in love or our children was conceived because we just like somebody and we hope they'll stay around or we, or we needed some bills paid or something or we had just a one night stand and oh Lord, I'm pregnant. We look at our children as a burden, something we got to worry with, something we are very impatient with, um, the, and, and the first the first thing to do is to beat them beat them pop on them whoop them whoop they hey you gotta whoop them you gotta whoop them that's that come from slavery that come from slavery you can't you can't you cannot make anything good off of any type of behavior that came from the plantation i'm sorry black folks it came from the black from the plantation and what it does is it makes I, it makes us grow up to be emotionally unintelligent because the first thing she went to holler about, my children are very well taken care of. You talking about maintaining. You talking about food, water, clothing, shelter. That's what you're supposed to do when you lay down and you have a, and you get a baby. You know, that same thing with the dudes. I pay my child support. Well, you, you know, you're supposed to because ain't nobody tell you spread your seed everywhere. You gave that woman your seed. Nobody told you to spray everywhere. Okay, so, but we raise our children in that. We get behind closed doors and our children are, are very, that you very well dressed and this and that, but they, you dumb MF, sit your dumb A down somewhere. Ooh, you a stupid MF, why you went down there? You know, we talk to our children so bad. We do, we do. And I'm gonna tell you something. Everybody sit around and talk about verbal abuse is even worse than physical abuse because the physical wounds can heal and then the soul wounds uh, take forever to heal. Then what you think you're doing when you're calling your children stupid, dumb, MFs, Bs? What you think you're doing? You're giving them soul wounds. 
and they got they're gonna get out here and have kids and do the same thing and the cycle is gonna continue and then when they get outside uh, 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 of your four walls somebody say something wrong to them they ready to kill them ready to jump on them ready to beat them ready and you wonder they getting in trouble at school they fighting in school they don't want to listen they got an issue with authority and the teacher and the principal kicking them out of school and the police is beating them and shooting them and locking them up in prison we have gave quote unquote white supremacy we, we don't put we don't put them in the unemployment we don't put the white supremacists in the unemployment line that's what we have done by the way we treat our children the when we conceive women because we don't want to conceive and carry okay how we carry our children if we cussing and fussing and smoking and drinking and carrying on while them children are in our womb we hating the baby daddy because we laid down with somebody did what we didn't want commitment and then when we got pregnant we wanted him to be accountable but he wasn't accountable before we laid down with him and we get these kids and then we tell the kids i gotta pay these bills you sorry daddy this and that what you don't realize when you talking to a child like that about the other parent you still talking about a part of them Especially black women that, that dog out their sons and then turn around and hold their sons and, and, and cover for their sons' wrongdoing, cover for their sons dogging out other females. I saw a video where this, this mama uh, was telling the girl, talking about, yeah, he been messing over you. I met wifey. I met the woman he really care about. Why are you as a woman even standing there in, in, entertaining that, tearing down another young lady who was dumb enough to give your son the time of day? I believe, and I and I, I stand on this because I feel no conviction of the Holy Spirit. I believe if we stop treating our children so bad that the, our children will grow up and treat each other better. That's why black families can't get along. A lot of abuse, a lot of trauma, and a lot of covert stuff. I, I just had an issue with a family member. That was trying to talk, trying to open up after 60 years. I'm not going to say no names because they probably going to see this video. After 60 years of, of, of carrying a certain trauma, opened up and tried to talk about it. The person that needed to say, you know what? I'm sorry. I just didn't know better at the time. They all oh, don't even talk about that. You don't need to bring that up. You, oh, uh, you did this and did that yourself. And, uh, that wasn't the point. The point is that person been carrying that hurt for all those years. And that the, 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 the person that helped cause it should have at least acknowledged the pain. But we do that. And oh, black folks can't get along. And oh, and my Caucasian folks, you ain't got to like a comment. Uh, 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 you know, and my, my Asian, my, I got, I got Asian friends. I got Caucasian friends. Y'all, I understand, you know, y'all don't like to touch this type of stuff. Cause the first thing they'll say is y'all being racist. So I understand, but I know y'all feel me. Okay. We get out in, in, in public. And I mean, we, we fight and, and I mean, everything is an argument. Everything is MF and MF and, and F this and F that and all that. It is ridiculous. But it comes from how we are conceived and brought up and sent out into the world. Children learn what they live. And everybody is not going to get it right because everybody, like I said, there is no perfect parent because there are no perfect people. But as a whole, as a whole, some of us black folks got to do better. Because anytime other black folks look at like, wow, I don't see that in in in, in, in other uh, other people. I don't see I, I don't see the the the, the verbal abuse and the, and the humiliation of children. Even if if you got Caucasians and and, and Asians that are abusing their children, you you don't see it like that like you go anywhere in the store anywhere it's some black mama loud capping embarrassing their child you know where that come from that come from master used to whoop master used to whoop great 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 grandma if if the, if the child was just being a child just frolicking around and being a child 
they weren't allowed to be children. They weren't allowed to have any type of emotion or intellect because that would have made them human. And you couldn't be, you You was only three-fifths a man. So, you you know, and that, that counts for the vote, but as, as how you treat it as well. So, that you you couldn't you couldn't have emotions and feelings. You got to shut up, suck it up, and push on. And if and that comes from the the, the, the mamas and, and, and the slaves not wanting to be whipped or punished or beat for whatever their children did. So when you get out in public and your child just being a child, you extra on on that child because you don't want people looking around thinking you don't know how to raise your children and you can't control your children. We parent from the ego. A bruised ego. We parent from a wounded soul. And all we do is send other children out, send our children out into the world to, to, to get with other wounded souls and have children and raise them up and wound them because hurt people hurt people. And that's what's happening with us as a people. And like I say, this ain't going to be popular because a lot of times black folks look at I, I, if I could feed them and clothe them and keep a roof over their head you can't tell me nothing that's a lie from the pit of hell because what happened to the village that's supposed to raise the children when I was growing up anybody on my street can address something I'm doing teach you teach children learn what they live you're teaching them how to deal with conflict you're teaching them how to deal with anxiety you're teaching them how to how to deal with the pressures of life you're teaching them how to deal with stress by how you react to them children are sponges and the soul will remember the soul will always remember god will, will remember and when you get, you got to remember when you get old and that child just throw you in a nursing home, even though he or she got time to look after you, she, she just throw you in a nursing home. And you be like, I don't know. I, do, I worked two, three jobs to put clothes on that, on that girl back. And that girl them threw me in the nursing home. You put clothes on her back, but did you put love in her heart? Did you speak life to her mind, his mind? Because they're going to take it out on somebody. A lot of these angry young men out here running around, got a problem with authority, got a problem with order. You can tell by the way they wear their clothes, they got a problem with order and authority. And they got beat down and talked down to. And either they end up finding a woman who don't know how to talk to them and don't know how to speak life. They find a woman that's going to that's gonna abuse them mentally, physically, verbally. They're going to find a woman to do that or, 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 or they're going to be angry. And the first, first woman got a problem with her. I say, you know what? I didn't like I, I didn't like this or like that or whatever. He going upside her head. Oh, it's going to come out. It's going to come out. Because this girl, when I told her, I said, see about the child. Did she very well taken care of? I'm buying uniforms for her now. So? You buying uniforms for her, that ain't stopping her from crying. She hungry, she tired. See what's wrong with her. Our children, our little black children, all children deserve all the patience in the world. But our black children really deserve all the patience and love that they could stand. They do. They do. Because they grow up wounded, hurt people that go to church and love the Lord and everything and don't know how to even have intimacy with God because your parents are the first teachers the parent your parents are the first things you see and how a mother and father relate to their child is how they're going to see God so if you in that behind you, you stupid, you dumb, get your MF and A over here and uh, sit down, sit your MF and A down somewhere and all that. They gonna think that's how God feel about them. A lot of you got 60, 70, 80 year old people think that God just waiting in the cloud with a lightning bolt or something and pow, strike them down because of how they was raised. My rant is over. That's not the first time I've stood up for a child. 
it won't be my last. I will do the best I can and do what does say the Lord. You know, I believe that it starts with how our children are conceived, how they are cared for inside the womb, and how they are raised. Because we, everybody said color don't matter. Yes, it does. If color didn't matter, God wouldn't have made it. Color matters. Not in how, not that you, you should be treated, disrespected, or dehumanized because of your color. But because some a lot of times your color is associated with a culture that you have. And sometimes we have to unlearn some th certain things that's considered culture. And put on the mind of Christ. And love our children. And love people. The way Christ loved us. It breaks my heart. That the most innocent in society, our children that's coming and our elderly that's going, have to too fragile physically to have to suffer any type of abuse. Now, if you believe in corporal punishment or spank, that's fine. But if you start off talking to them and being patient with them, popping, you, you popping on a child, just constantly popping and hitting on a child is lazy parenting. It's plantation parenting. I said it. I'll stand by it. I hope you all got something from this video. Because we laugh and we celebrate and we joke about beating our kids. Which if the, our kids are only learning what they live. I told people, you can't beat them for what you're teaching them. If you're cussing them, you're cussing around them. They say a cuss word, you ready to whoop, you ready to whip them. Turn around and whip your own tail. I feed them, I clothe them. You're supposed to. And kids ain't got no business hearing about no bills. None. None. If they can't have something, no, you can't have it. If you want them to work toward it, I tell you what, you do some extra chores, I, I give you some extra money, save your money, or whatever, whatever you save, I'll meet you halfway. Make them work and make them earn what they want. Oh, they're, they're, no, because I got bills, I got, no, hey, you, they don't need to hear about no bills. Bills is not their business. Bills will be their business when they get their own bills. Now, if they grown, like I tell my grown ones, let me tell you something, you ain't finna affect my crab leg money. Okay, you better go to daily work, daily pay somewhere. You better go. I don't know what you're going to do. But we got to do better. We got to do better. We got to do better. And how I know this, I've researched a lot of our ancestors before slavery. That They didn't parent their children like this. They they wrap their children up and, and they babies when they babies came out the womb, you can't expect a baby to come out the womb where they've been nice and warm and cozy and grew and developed and everything for ten months and then just come out the womb and don't want to be held. They they they, they can smell their mama. They want they want their mama, they want their parents. That's why skin to skin is so important. They want their parents. Oh, put them down. Let them holler. Let them holler. Let them holler. But it, 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 giving, giving babies a full-blown panic attack. At, 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 at two months old, six weeks old, four weeks old, giving babies full-blown panic attacks. And then ready to put them on medicine when they can't sit still and they, their nervous system is all jacked up when they get older and go to school and, and everything. Wonder why they all over the place. I ain't nobody's doctor. But I know that I'm grateful that I had a grandmother who passed down to me how to love on your children. She didn't talk to me like that. And I ain't special or nothing. I just think it used to break her heart. She didn't want to see no child hungry. She didn't want to see well, no child wanting for nothing. 
She used to did, used to take take their the elderly people, her elderly sister and cousins and all of them take them to the store. She was just as patient with them, and I guess that's where I got a little bit of that from. But this ain't about me. This about us as a whole, as a people. Love on your children. Love on them. Talk to them. Calm down and take a breath. A lot of times you end up uh, uh, whipping and beating on your children just because you aggravated and you stressed. And they, they just come along being a child and they're getting on my nerves. I had a, a tough day at work and I in the traffic and the paper cut me off in traffic. You go home soon, the child do something. As soon as you get a report from the school that the child has done something, you unleash all that on the child. But I believe that's why, you know, I believe that's why we harm on each other at a greater rate. And I believe that's why a lot of our black men are in prison. They're angry. And I've worked in four maximum security prisons. The few that I've talked to, and when I say few, that's a good bit, are abused. They were beat. They got their tail whipped. They got their tail toe up. But in prison, for murder, manslaughter, aggravated assault, rape. Look at the numbers. You got to take my word for it. Just look it up and look at the numbers. But whipping and tearing their tail up supposed to work, right? All right, y'all. I'm going to let y'all go. Y'all be blessed and pray and ask for guidance. Ask for wisdom when it comes to your children. And teach your children how to pray. Teach them how to just bow their head and say, Lord, help me. Corporate prayer has been taken out of school. But there is no law under the sun that say your child can't bow her head, their head and say, Lord, help me. I thank you, Jesus, for passing that test. And Lord, help me in this situation. Teach your children to pray. All right? Y'all be blessed. I'm out.